dicho, güey. Uh, what's up, guys? It's Coach Clay. What's up? It's Who Phil. Phil the Physiques. Oh, wow. Hey, what's Phil. Up? Hey, how you doing? Got a joke for you. Oh, goodness. You ready for this one? <laughs> yeah, what is it? All right. There are three tomatoes. <laughs> three of them, okay? Three. They're walking across the bar. Yeah. The last one fell off. And the first one turned around and said, hey, catch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry, I well, kids, guys. <laughs> Dad jokes. A1. I'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're coming to you today to talk about training while in prep. So simply training. That's all we're talking about. Uh, when you come into prep, we want you to keep training like you were before you were in prep. There, so. is, there is no... Let me crank the reps so I can burn more fat. And all right, we're done. We're just done. <laughs> That's all we had to say, guys. No, I'm just kidding. Guys, if you want to compete, that means you're in the bodybuilding world. I don't care if you're bikini. I don't care if you're wellness. I don't care if you're figure physique, if you're men's physique, if you're classic physique, or if you're bodybuilding or women's bodybuilding. Nothing matters to me. You have to train like every session counts. You need to get in there, you need to move the weight, you need to not back down, not be scared, not walk away. You don't need to complain because you're tired, complain because you're exhausted, everybody else is too. That's the end of it. You need to go in there and you have to move the weight from point A to point B just like you do every single day. Now, this is the good thing. With training, most people love it. That's why they got into bodybuilding. I always do bodybuilding because it's a category and I don't want to offend anybody. So if they're classic physiques, like, I'm not bodybuilding, but we call it bodybuilding. So, Phil. Clay. When you train for prep, how do you like to train? I like a mixture of strength and hypertrophy. I like to still go heavy and, you know, make sure I'm still pushing good numbers and reps. But I still like the hypertrophy range of the 8 to 15 because that's where I per, personally I like my training sessions. I like to start with the heavy stuff, the more compound movements, and then towards the end and working in more towards hypertrophy. Um, I, I would agree with uh, with the compound movements starting at the beginning of uh, the workout. That's If we're not starting with a compound movement, that's because we're starting with the pre-exhaust. But... Compound movements need to, need to usually be done the more fresh you are. However, we will add them in late sometimes as a body shocker, just mm -hmm. really. But for the most part, your big compound movements, like your squats, we're going to build a lot of mass. Or we'll even go from squats to let's talk about like a reverse hack squat as a good starting workout. And I mean... I think we get relatively heavy on those. I mean, and really heavy, and we put in the reps when we're going heavy. That's the thing. Well, That's, I, know, I know. There's days. I remember the one day. I already. Know, I know what you're going to talk about. I you you didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, the day we did the reverse hack and we got up to like six plates on each side. side, and, and we then just, we what did we do? Drop set of it. Drop set. Yeah, it. we did, six plates all we the way did down. One plate. I don't know. Twelve, fifteen reps. Two plates. Twelve, fifteen reps. All the way up to six plates. I'm sure for six. We only, I didn't get that many. I only got like eight. We got one. Then it was get. cut it to nothing. So it was cut a cut a plate off each side, and, and then keep go going as many each. as you can. Cut a plate on each side as many as you can. We finished that exercise, and I think we were both done. With the <laughs> I workout. felt like I was done with the workout. Both of us were like, uh, "Do we have anything left?" And that was our first exercise, but we put everything we had into it, and I, I really remember that because I mean it. That was, it wasn't that was one of those days I was nauseous. I didn't even want to go to the next exercise. So I was nauseous. I'll be right back. Hold on one second. Pause. Alright, so I'm back. <laughs> we, have a, we have a uh, studio here that we actually are filming in. It has other doors to the outside hallway. And uh, we had to uh, close the doors because Sarah's out there uh, yelling at somebody for some reason. I don't know. But... We're back. But anyways, that, that the reason why that one stuck out is because, I mean, we lifted heavy weight, but we didn't back down every time we took off uh, a plate. I mean, 
as we stripped it, I thought I was going to throw up every set. I was trying to catch breath. I was trying to, I probably burned hundred calories in that exercise. Just, just that set even. So in, in that scenario, we had time under tension. We had volume because our reps were through the roof. And strength. We had strength because we were doing, I mean, six plates on each side with the reverse hat going, I mean, six, eight reps. And then going down to five plates, it doesn't feel any lighter, guys. And then going down to four plates, it doesn't feel any lighter. We're giving all that we have to get every rep. Did the one plate fail of me. You're right. I, <laughs> I, I remember that. I do. And when we got off, we were just like looking at each other. Yeah. Like, oh, God. But that's that's the way you have to train in prep. And you should keep the intensity of your training up through prep. There, just kind of like how I just talked about, there is no... I feel like I commonly hear like, oh, like you're leaning out, like you like back off the weight and... I ain't back No, off. the training is still for growing. And of course, we talk about the black and gray area. There's the black and white, there's the gray area. And of course, you always want to build muscle going through a prep that obviously has other, you know, things that pertain to it. Um, we always feed our clients going into training sessions. So we always recomp for the most yeah. part, our clients, our clients almost always put on muscle going mm -hmm. through a prep. Yeah. Um, now that depends if you're natural or not. Obviously, Even not natural, natural, I've put on a lot of muscle when people going into shows. Exactly. And, and just, I might not put it on two weeks out, one week out, but that week eight, seven, six, five, four, those weeks I'm putting muscle on them because their body fat's lower, they're more insulin sensitive, I'm driving the food around the training, and I'm forcing them to be uncomfortable. I don't let them go in the gym and stay comfortable. I really don't. Uh, I've been called a lot of names about the training programs that I give. I've been yelled at about them. I've been told they're hard, but that's what's needed. That's why I said I'm, this morning. <laughs> right? That's why I'm a coach is because I put you in the uncomfortable area you don't want to be in to get what you have to get to be the best you can be on stage. And that has to be the mindset going into the gym. Uh, Doing that, uh, what show was it? The first call outs that we did together last mm -hmm. year. That Tuesday workout, we did shoulders. And I was telling you this a little bit ago, but I, I, want, I want to say it now for them to hear is we had it videoed uh, just by, you know, we had three of us going in the show and people were watching us work out. And uh, we were doing an FST7 program. And we were doing our shoulder day and we were, got to the FST7 portion and it, I mean, there was no give up. It was, we went hard as we could. I mean, I'm talking about we moved weight. And I mean, guys, we're four days out from show, five days out from show. I mean, it's a Tuesday night and we should show Saturday morning. And we put everything we had into it. We, we told each other, like, you know, I'm not letting you back down. And you better get up and let's get this shit done. Let's knock it out. Let's make each other hurt. Put each other in pain. Watch, I mean, get everything you can out of this program. Everything you can out of this day. Because, you know, you only got so many days when you're in prep. Let's say uh, you do shoulders. Let's, let's just say you do shoulders once a week and you have a 12-week prep. You got 12 days. Yeah. 12 days to bring the best you can possibly bring out of that body part. Uh, I mean, if it's a lacking, well, yeah. Well, for your training split, you're always in prep. You're almost always going to be training your weak body parts at least twice a week. At least yeah. under us, at least. Yeah. Um, any lacking body part is trained two to three times a week, and that's mm -hmm. why your split for going into a show is very important. Um, you want your split to be set up for you to grow what needs to be grown. Mm -hmm. shape what needs to be shaped he, you know especially you have clients I know that he's not working on growing them he might be working on yeah. bringing down size that's a thing that happens especially yeah. we have with uh, bikini them. girls for example yeah if you know uh, their quads are too big they're gonna lose points so you yeah. have to try to bring them down um, figure girl i have one right now like we were talking about earlier that's just her routine is all shaping and trying to bring some more shape back because she really does carry a lot a lot of muscle she has strength like no other i mean really everything is about really shaping her up the best we can for stage this year 
because her muscle's there. We just got to get it reproportion the way we want it to look to really bring out an hourglass figure a wide upper back smaller waist her quads already are popping but we're, we're taking those quads and we're really working a lot of high reps from different angles on them to really make them just stand out because they are such a dominant body body part among other girls when she gets up there her size is there but now we want to just, we want to draw attention to how good her legs are, how good her back is. So we have to bring the shape in. And that's, that's her program. Uh, and she'll do that all the way through her prep. She'll do it all the way to show she's done it in her off season. Guys, you have to put a program together or your coach has to put one together that complements you and what you need. Uh, that's one of the biggest things I see going online to bodybuilding.com and pulling up a, uh, program it may not be the best for you it may not be be what you need and like you just said the high rep stuff just because you're in prep doesn't mean you punch out reps it means you punch out some weight and weight will burn some calories intensity will burn some calories go in there all right let, let me tell you this right now you walk through that gym door nothing else matters i say this over and over to people when you walk through that gym door you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, and you imagine yourself on that stage. Imagine that overall being handed to you. That's your name being called out. When you hear that name, how do you feel? Ooh. Now you go touch your weights because every rep needs to be done with the same passion you have from that memory that you just made in your head. That thought is when you touch your weights, and that's how you become successful. You don't become successful by going there and pussing out. And we talk about this all the time. I hear guys say, oh, I'm in prep. I don't care if you're cranky. I don't care if you're hungry. I don't care if you're angry. I don't care if you're mad. I don't care if you're upset. I don't care what's going on <laughs> all outside of, of the gym. <laughs> right. That gym is your time to make the best you can be. You go in there. Hey, guys, I can't. There's, there's you just got to go. you got to make it happen. As long as you have a good training program, which is obviously important, there's two really important things you should walk into every gym session with. One is here. intensity, intensity and the other one is purpose. Yes. Intensity, 100%. the reason for intensity is because I can give me a workout and give him the same exact workout. I can go, man, that was easy, cake work. And he can come out walking and saying, oh my God, that was the hardest workout I've ever done. Why? He worked out intensely. I just went through the motions. Every workout that you go in there, you can have either his situation or my situation. You can go in and do everything intensely and do it with purpose and have a really good workout. Or you can go in there and just move weight around. It's up to you. It's 100% and true. And unless you have a personal trainer that's there doing a hands-on workout with you or we train together often, so I can't puss out, but <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> but it doesn't matter how simple or complicated your workout is. Your intensity is going to make that workout however you please. The success of the workout comes from the intensity you put into it. I don't care if you're le lifting five pound weights. I can. All right. I had a drill sergeant one time when I was 17 years old. They gave me a three pound canteen of water. And he said, I can make the walls literally sweat with you doing exercise with this canteen. And he did. Three pounds of water. It was a canteen, that's it, full of water. 32 ounces of water in a hard plastic canteen. And he literally killed me with that. And I'm telling you guys this. So it doesn't matter the weight does not matter the weight if you're going intense. Intensity sometimes requires you to decrease weight over the time of the workout. So where we might go in and we might hit, you know, let's say front squats for 225 and we're doing our sets, we're going back and forth and we're giving everything we got. We might get to the leg press and where ordinarily we do 10 plates each side, we might be five plates each side, absolutely screaming to get it up because we worked out so intense leading up to it that this is where our recovery has taken us to this is all we can get on that set because our muscles are destroyed and that's the idea of a workout truly is the idea of the workout it, 
I give a lot, a lot of training sessions that have uh, pre-exhaustions in it for that purpose. Mm-hmm. Because if I pre-exhaust a muscle, let's do legs for a good example. I go in and I give you uh, Wingate sprints. We talked about them last video, guys. They kill you. We give you those Wingate sprints. And those Wingate sprints are a pre-exhaustion before your squats. Your squats are going to decrease in the weight and the rep range because your legs are so inflamed. But you're going to get twice the amount of value out of that workout because you have so much blood in there and you're just literally ripping the muscles apart. I mean, like, and I'll give you an example. I can go in and back squat 465 times 5 and not have done any uh, Wingate sprints. Or I can go in there and do Wingate sprints and I can do 315 by 7 or 8. <laughs> then that's it. Because I'm so inflamed. Those Just going down there, just spreading up the muscle apart, ripping it. Pushing up through it is so much harder. And I mean, that's what a pre-exhaustion does. And the only time you should... The only approved purpose <laughs> of decreasing weight is because of complete exhaustion. You're exhausting the muscle. You're working as hard as you can. And then it's okay. And holding form. Yes. And we talked about cheater reps. So that's something that we need to talk about on here is something that him and I have talked about and that we are okay with are cheater reps. And what is a cheater rep? It's when you break perfect form to complete a rep but it's only good on certain exercises certain exercises and it's to help you reach muscular failure um as chris bump said going to the last olympia Mm -hmm. i feel like the whole last couple weeks of his training almost every single exercise you'd see him doing full reps and then he gets done and he's doing half reps and then he's doing quarter reps, and that's all I could get. There's also four reps where I gotta hit 12, I do my 12 reps, and then I swing to get those extra three, four, cool. five reps. And um, that's what you do on safe exercises, guys. Safe exercises. Like what he's talking about lat pull downs, okay? So we're doing lat pull downs, let's say you're doing them, and you gotta get strict form out to the side, really work at that lat. Okay, you're up and down, you're staying perpendicular, you're pulling nice and deep. And then, you know, you get. 10 in, you get 11, and you, 11 comes down to here, and that's all you get. You come back up. So now for number 12, you might throw in a cheater rep. You might throw in another one for number 13, where you're actually rocking your body backwards to pull it down to that chest to get that weight down there. You're using a little bit of momentum. But that's, you know, yeah. and that is for an ad, more of an advanced lifter. Right. You should not just be sitting there swinging all of your reps because you're not no. getting. Purpose that, that's that's out of your training like your last rep or two you, last three reps I, I tell my clients when I train them I'll usually throw in on an exercise or two cheetah reps. I'll say okay. We're doing biceps now. Okay, so perfect form perfect form perfect form perfect form And now they're coming up and I'm helping them with a couple and now it goes into all right I want you to do a cheetah rep. So what we're gonna do we're gonna take a second let your arms go straight Breathe in, come up, bend that back just slightly. Not bad where it's going to hurt you, but it provides momentum from the hips to throw it up. So now you got some momentum going with you, and that's because you've done perfect form for your first, you know, 10, 11, 12 reps. Now we're on our last set, and I want to get everything I can out of you because the other muscles are going to come in to help that muscle. So if we're working biceps and we're doing straight bar curls, we might have a little bit of delta action come in because now we're throwing our elbows a little bit forward to help us finish off that rep, you know? And we're just doing it to completely get everything we can out of that muscle, but we're not doing it our entire set. We're doing it a couple reps, guys. And it's on a safe exercise. You should never do a force rep on a deadlift. Because you're you're probably going to get hurt. You're going to hurt your back. You really, eventually, it might not be today, it might not be the next time you do it, but eventually you're going to hurt your back. If you're doing heavy deads and you come up and you break form, let your butt go all the way to the ceiling and your back be down and you're trying to lift it from the hips, I mean, you're going to hurt yourself. That lower back's going to hurt. You're going to cause either damage to a muscle or to your spine that's going to keep you from lifting and continuing through prep at 100%. Absolutely. So that's why we're very, very strict on form, but we allow cheater reps on things here and there. 
to get everything out of it. Um, one of the ways uh, I love this, uh, I'll give a shout out to um, AJ. So AJ Sims is a very good prep coach. A lot of people know who he is. Uh, one of the things that I see him do a lot that I have done over the last couple years and I love are leg extensions. So we get down on the leg extension machine and Phil will know this as soon as I start saying it. I give him straight legs. We're going all the way out. We're locking out. We're doing perfect form. Then all of a sudden at the end, what do I do? Sit forward, give me half reps. Yeah. So I takes forward on the bench and he gives me half reps. Still legs going straight, but now they're at an angle going down and they're just coming out to here instead of sitting back, having your hips back, everything coming all the way up. Now he's sitting forward, sitting locked in on the machine and just giving those half to three quarter reps, just hammering the top of those quads. And that is truly a cheetah rep. Okay. We're not doing a full rep. We're positioning our body where we can get more on the upper end of the movement and push through it and drive from that hip and from that upper quad rather than sitting back and focusing all on VMO, which does a lot of that movement also until it pulls up. So that's a, that's a type of cheetah rep and I give them a lot, especially mm -hmm. in prep because we have nasty legs. Y'all can go, go look at Instagram. You can look <laughs> at our guys and girls. We don't come in with fat legs. We have lines. I have lines. <laughs> <laughs> we have so, lines in our off season. Yeah, I got lines right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, the other thing, just to touch back on training with purpose. This is extremely important because we are, we all, obviously we're referring to bodybuilders for right. this this training because this is prep. When you train with purpose, every exercise should be trained with purpose, and I say this because. You're not going in there and just doing a movement. Uh, when you're doing a lap pull down, there's so many different grips, yep. handles, whether you're pulling to your collarbone, whether you're pulling to your sternum, all those things are gonna activate Elbow different positions. things. So when you're doing an exercise with purpose, you're, let's stay with the back or the lap pull downs. If you're doing a pull down and you're pulling, for me right now, I'm aiming to grow my lower back, so I'm going to pull low. I'm not going to be pulling up to my collarbone. I'm going to be pulling my my sternum yep. because I and, and I'm going to be chest is more. Real, chest is going to be real high. He's going to arch in the back to really concentrate. Here, turn it up for me, Phil. Really concentrate right here, and he's going to face that chest up. So now he's contracting here because that's where his lower lat is. So you. His training to purpose. I'm going to add to because I agree with this wholeheartedly is what is the desired result of the exercise you're doing? Is it, are you desiring, are you needing more width? So we're gonna sit here and we're gonna come out, boom. Real strict form, really work those upper lats. When we do our lat press downs, are we gonna give a big arch in our back and work our lower lats because we want that nice depth and we're gonna arch it when we come down and push it down into our hips. When we do our rows, are we doing supinated grip? Or are we doing pronated grip? Are we doing a neutral grip? Right. Are we doing a low row with a neutral grip? Are we doing a huh? A high row with a neutral grip. Yeah, are we doing a high row with a neutral grip? Are we doing like uh, one of my favorite exercises that I've been doing non stops are uh, uh, chest supported high rows, uh, really focusing on my upper back and really I'm bringing my elbows like out to the side, almost like I look do a rear delt, but I'm collapsing that full back. Mm -hmm. with heavy dumbbells. And then I follow that up with a superset lately of uh, back flies because it just annihilates me. So, you know, I'm really wanting density in my upper back. And now my next program I go to next week, it's almost all lower back focus because I really need some more lower back. I need I, my back, I want, I want the best back on stage. Mm -hmm. This was the first. This was the first year I'd say at Masters Nationals. I thought I had the best back on stage. Uh, when we were turning around, I looked all the way down. There's one other back that competed with me. And one thing I noticed is I, I, I can get more density, and he won't compete with me. And that's why I think in my head, I, I map that painting out and say, all right. So now if I come with more density, he, these guys can't keep up with me. You know, I've been in the top five for pro qualifiers over and over and over again, and I don't have the best physique, but no one has the work ethic that I have. No one has the discipline that I have, and I tell myself that every day. I may not have the best genetics, but damn it, I will tell you, you will not outwork me in a gym. 
you want to go in there and you want to go head to head, I'll watch everything you do and I'll go harder, I'll go better and I will not stop. And what I imagine in my head is that right there. Every time I touch a weight, whoever is going to be standing next to me, I don't want them to be able to say, I outwork this person. So I work harder and harder and harder and harder. And that's the mentality that I give myself to make sure I'm the best I can be. Yeah, I mean, uh, every every time I've ever wanted to quit on cardio, any time that like, prep's gotten really hard on me, I have one question for myself. You probably ask yourself the same mm -hmm. question. Any competitors probably have, especially the good ones, because every time it gets hard... Oh, tell me this question. Is that person standing up there winning that overall working harder than me? And that's that's spot on. I'm like, is mm -hmm. the person who's going to win, is he going to be the one who didn't do that extra reps? Is mm -hmm. he going to be the one who... Didn't do all his cardio, didn't eat that meal, you know, they cheated on the meal. I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if there's anything that ever gets hard, I ask, why am I doing this? Right. And the end goal is, you know, I want that number one slot and I want my name to be called. Because nothing feels better, let me tell you. <laughs> Man, that feeling is. I told Phil just, that. What I told you guys, I know I told him the first time he went into Daytona. I remember telling him this, uh, I don't know if you remember this, Phil, I brought the spin bike over to the leg press machine, oh, fuck. Rolled, it, rolled it on over, mm -hmm. and uh, I put you on the spin bike, and I said, go, and you got there, and you just pedal, pedal, we're doing wind gate sprints, and then we're jumping on to the leg press, <laughs> yes, it's dangerous, it hurts, but when I told him that, and he was sitting there, he's pedaling, I said, don't let anybody work harder than you. Just imagine right now, they're calling your name. They're calling you for that overall. This is your overall right here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep those legs moving, hard as you can. All right, get off, get off. Couple deep breaths, couple deep breaths. All right, get on this machine. Get on this leg press machine, go. Do not let them call somebody else's name. Close your eyes, imagine that's your name being called. That's your overall. How hard are you willing to work for it? And that right there, that kind of motivation to the, our community, our bodybuilding community, our, us in the NPC, uh, if you're OCB or you're uh, NGA, I don't care, but we're still a bodybuilding community. That kind of output that you're willing to put out to win everything, that's what you need to have every day. And I have to remind myself that every day when I walk in the gym. I love training with clients because I have to have that mind that mindset for me and them when we walk in the gym, right? Absolutely, and that's, a, uh, I guess, a good thing to talk about too is like who you train with. When you're on prep, there's gonna be a point where there's people you can't work out with. I've had to tell people I can't work out with them. I, I had you to talk too that. much, you don't train hard enough, whatever, you know, sometimes I don't like to say it or I just don't say it. I'm like, oh, no, I can't really work out with you. Right? Well, I'll give you guys an example. I had a client this year, and he'll probably watch this. He's a great guy. I actually love working out with him. But the workouts are too long for prep when I'm in there to smash the weights. And I had to tell him, like, hey, man, I'm, I'm in here for prep. I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I got blinders on. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. Don't do anything. I'm going in here, and I'm in here to train. But the reason why is I needed that intensity to the next level. I was so in a zone, so so focused on training so hard that my rests were to the second. And you know, 10 seconds before my rest time was supposed to be up, I'm already on the machine, I'm sitting on my feet, I'm watching that clock, clicking it off and I'm going. With that person, I couldn't do that because he's never experienced a prep before, never experienced that just give it all you have right at this time because this is all you have in you and you just lay it on the line and it would slow me down because like I would get off my leg press and he'd go get a drink of water and I'd be like, yo, dude, you need to get on here. I only got a minute 45 second rest and uh, it's gonna take you a minute 45 and then we gotta put plates back on, you know? So I had to tell him, be blunt with him, say, hey man, I don't, we're not working out right now. This is, this is me. I know it sounds rude, I know it sounds mean, but this mentality that I have is what's gonna let me win. And I mean, so, this is gonna go full circle between your free time, your training, your you know, your cardio time, your, your, uh, everything in general when it comes to the prep, like who you surround yourself with can either benefit you or deter you. Right. So, you know, if you're training somebody who talks a lot or just training with somebody who doesn't understand. And of course I, I'm speaking on this to be the best, to be right. the person who's taken an overall, you know, they're, 
are people who step on stage who are, you know, they just like to step on stage, you know, we're, the, we're talking about pushing everything to the limit. Yes. We're talking about being number one. We're not talking about just to compete. You have, if you can compete and, you know, not push yourself to, to these extents, but you're not going to win. Right. And it kind of defeats the purpose of competing because you don't, all right. Here's a question to ask yourself. Are you doing this to be the best you can be and to stand up there and try to compete? Are you doing this just because you want to touch stage? The people that I want to work with, the people I love working with, are the people that are goal-oriented. And I'm going to give you an example. Uh, Kevin Lewis, I hope you watch this. I'm giving you a huge shout-out right now. I started working with this guy, Kevin Lewis, what, I think three years ago now. Three years ago, we went through a general dieting phase. Um, his fiance is a competitor. She's one of my competitors. She's been with me several years and I love working with her. And he loved watching her compete and he said, I have to do this. So after his general diet phase said, no, you're still my coach, we're going on stage. I will promise you this, Kevin did not have the ability to win a show right then and there. Not at all. But, but <laughs> fast forward to last year, every show he did, he won an overall in. Think about that, guys. Beast. All he wanted to do, he was so goal-oriented, he said, make me the best I can be every single time I touch stage. Every single time. So that second year that I worked with him, he still won in overall at his first show ever. Uh, because he put in, you know, a year with me of training hard, dieting, learning everything, learning how to train. And then last year, he's overall, overall, overall. I mean, he, he really, he put himself in a position where it's like, who is this guy? Because he, he is a little bit older than a couple guys that he competed against by about 10 years, actually 13 years. And, uh... This guy was a week out from nationals, you know, doing a show to get qualified, and Kevin beat him in the overall, and he's an amazing competitor. This guy was top five at nationals, and now people are like, you know, who's Kevin, man? He's winning. He's won three overalls back to back to back. He's beating people who are placing on the national stage. Like, who is this guy? He beat a couple people that yeah. were at that show. Yeah. The last one, yeah. Yeah, he beat a lot of them. <laughs> he brought it. Well, I mean, he got the overall, so yeah, <laughs> yeah he beat everyone. <laughs> yeah, so... uh I mean, he's, that's, that's the mentality, man. That, that's that mentality right there is what I love to work with. That's what I want you guys to understand about training is when you walk into the gym, it's, it's not to go in there and pussyfoot around. I love that word. <laughs> it's to go in there and really press the envelope on your training. I don't care that you're tired. I don't care that you're exhausted. I don't care that you had to do cardio this morning and you got up at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., or 4 a.m. I've been there. I've succeeded with it. So can you. End of story. Anybody can have success if they want it bad enough. Absolutely. The biggest thing is going to be the consistency and the intensity of your training. Training with purpose. Making sure you're getting in there. Getting done what needs to be done. And the results will show. And I'm going to add one little thing on here. If you don't know how to train a muscle, but you know you're lacking it, one, send us a message. We'll help you. But two, log on to YouTube and watch videos. Not every person's going to be right, but you will find consistency and that will help you. Because once you find five people said do this, but one person said only do this, you're going to lean towards those five people. And that consistency you see will help you because now you've learned how to do the exercise. Guys, nobody is perfect. Nobody has a perfect physique. Nobody. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> just... you know Philly physiques over here, how he got his name. It's just so perfect. So he had to add it in there. No. But seriously, guys, we're all working to improve and get better. Don't use prep as a way of downplaying your training and focusing on everything else. We focus on diet 100%. We focus on cardio 100%. We focus on training 100% our best that we can give every single day. And that's going to vary what you can give due to that exhaustion rate, but you're still going to give 100%. If I'm not laying down on the floor, I probably didn't give 100% because I usually have to lay down on the floor sometimes <laughs> in a workout. 
And I, I try not to sometimes because, you know, I have some competitors, so I just lay down against machines, and that's why I'm leaning up against them. But uh, it's about giving your all in every aspect of that training, giving it all and how much weight you can move properly, training the muscle that you're supposed to train the way you're supposed to train it, meaning if you're wanting to work your biceps, we're not going to swing every rep so our shoulders are getting it, you know? We're not going to sit here and do this. This isn't going to work your bicep. Look at my arm. It's not even moving. It's just, I see a lot of people curl and they do this. If I lighten the weight, we come down and up. We use this as an axis point. Remember, axis points are what concentrate a muscle. If we're, if we're swinging the entire rep or we're pulling the rep back rather than curling, I see this a lot. I don't know if you see it. Yeah, the, they, they, the they want to back. They want to help yeah, shorten. They, the, they just shorten that motion. So this is all they're doing is you know a three four inch motion, rather than a full motion. You want to train the muscle. You want to train, like he said, purpose. The purpose is to grow the muscle, not to, to do the rep. I, absolutely. So, so <laughs> and then fire your damn intensity through the roof. If you can't picture yourself winning it overall and feeling amazing about it. We got to get out of prep. We need to go back to the drawing board because you're not confident enough that you're going to win that overall. Because let me tell you, I put every person I put on stage to compete. Whether they win or lose, they know they look good. Yeah. I don't want people to touch stage that aren't confident. I want them to touch stage to be like, all right, let's go do this, coach. Uh, let's go do this. Let's go get another one for the team. Like, I mean, last year... The last full season we had, I had two competitors going back and forth for number 50 of the overall. They were competing a week apart, and they're like, no, I want the overall. I want the 50th overall. And they're arguing about it. And that's that's how you want I mean, they're so confident. <laughs> they didn't even win their clash yet. But let me tell you, they were so confident that one of them was going to be the 50th overall, which one was, that they, they were arguing back and forth over it because they trained so hard, they knew they were in the running for it. So... Yeah, you got anything else you'd like to add? No, I, uh, close your eyes when you walk into the gym, guys. That's it. Close your eyes and imagine yourself. Do not let anybody take anything away from you. Don't let anybody train harder than you. If you're not the hardest training person there, sit down for a couple minutes, close your eyes, say a prayer, talk to yourself, get that, get it back up and go over and start doing it again. I will not be all trained. And that's why I go to the gym I go to. What's in my gym? Bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I walk in my gym, I look around my gym every day. I have pro wrestlers and bodybuilders. That's it. And I say, who's working the hardest? I'll outwork you. And I go to work. And I let them motivate me. Because we all need somewhere to draw from. Absolutely. Well, guys, please take all kinds of intensity to your workouts. Do all every exercise with purpose. Smash our like button. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Please leave some comments. Um, if you guys need help with any exercises or if you guys have questions, please leave them down below. We will go ahead and answer those for you guys. Yes, yes. I get, I've gotten a lot of PMs, guys. A lot of private messages on my Instagram about our YouTube. Guys, put those in messages. That really helps us out. We are new. We are really new to YouTube. It's not something that we started when we wanted to over a year ago. Because of coronavirus, we held off. We had some other stuff going on with the business. But we want to make this all about bodybuilding, about prep. We have other uh, things going on here when we finish this season. We have, you know, we'll have another pro bodybuilder sitting right between us going over some of this stuff and going over some different topics. We really, 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 really want to grow us on YouTube because, I mean, entry-wise, we probably put three to four hundred on stage a year, right? Yeah. So think about that. We put three to four hundred entries on stage a year, okay, on our team. We know what we're doing. We win a lot of overalls. And this is a way for you to learn what we are teaching you and mix it with everything else you're learning out there to become great. This is what we're giving back. And I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys, I mean, I got, I've got a lot of good feedback. Thank you guys. But put the messages down there. Let us answer them because somebody else is thanking it. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Guys, we love you. 
Smash the like button, keep watching our videos, get your friends to subscribe, your mama's, grandma's, best you friends, aunt's, if, uncle's, dog to subscribe. I don't care, we just need more. If you guys learned something out of this video, if you could just tell a friend, share, share the information that you learned, um, we'd greatly appreciate it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your days. We're out. And we'll see y'all soon.